Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Risk Academy. Today we're going into Chapter 4, and we've talked about risk programs and risk processes, risk analysis, your governance on how to set up. We've covered some of the basics of getting the structure up and running. One of the things we've talked about is having to pick a methodology to actually do the work with. Uh, well, today we're going to talk about why healthcare has some issues with these. Uh, they're called risk frameworks or methodologies. There is a difference. I will explain those in a little bit. Um, but why healthcare is a unique animal, and you so as you're picking a process or a methodology or framework, putting them in place. You know, again, we like using methodologies and frameworks because. We don't have to build it from scratch. We can take something someone else has built and apply it to our situation and then modify it to fit our situation. We need to understand what's different about healthcare and why the rest of these aren't, aren't just a plug and play, why you just can't pick up a 300 sheet methodology and say, oh, we're going to do this and have it actually work in healthcare. Okay. I mentioned that a methodology and framework are actually two different things. And sort of the analogy I have is math. Okay, a method in math is something that you do it the same way every time. There's a, a structured way to do it and it's done. So it's complete. So methods are complete. Where a framework is not completely full, fully done yet. So framework is not complete. You'll sometimes hear frameworks called a CSF, Cyber Security Framework. They're focusing on the cybersecurity piece. A framework is meant to be sort of a little flexible. We, these are the things we think you should do, but here's sort of some optional things you might need to do. Some of this may not be germane to you and you can change. So frameworks are not complete. It means that you, you know, a, a mall or method, you have to do it the same way every time. Always has to be done that way. There's some industry frameworks and models. Um, there's Octave, FAIR, a NIST. ISO 27005, COBIT 5, those are just the most common ones. If you literally do an internet search for uh, risk methodology or risk framework, you're going to come up with a you know, hundred of them. Again, as an organization, you kind of have to understand what you're trying to do and then see which one fits. But here's the thing, every single one of these were built for other industries. A lot of them were built for banking. Okay, you have to understand the whole risk term and this whole risk thinking came out of the financial industry, banking, insurance companies. They've been working in this risk world for, you know, century or more now. So a lot of these were built to function on what they do. Healthcare, as we know, doesn't do. It's We're not a bank, we're providing health services. So we're going to talk here a little bit about why we're different and things to remember as you search some of these and then one particular one that was built around health. Okay, so why is healthcare different? What issues do healthcare uh, and healthcare practices face that a bank doesn't face. Why is it different? Well, let's start off with the big one. And I say now, HIPAA now is of age. It is 22 years old as the time that I recorded this video. Uh, so as I jokingly say all the time, HIPAA is old enough now to be ending college and getting kicked out of your house to go get a real job. So HIPAA is to the point where we, that guy's most of what we deal with because it's all about protecting health information. But that's not all. We also have risks around regulatory. 
you know, what does your state's attorney general require for you for handling data, for example? Get out of the data world, what regulatory comp compliance do you have from your state on your health issues? You know, are they doing any state-specific health regulations that you need to follow as well? Then, especially in the area here for those uh, folks that are actually medical directors for nursing homes, where you've got a contract with them, you may have some contractual risk that these, you know, these people never thought of. So not only are you responsible for your own organization, maybe you have a physician that's working for you that's also a medical director for a nursing home. Well, they're responsible for all of the nursing home risks and regulations and pieces as well. So you've got to you know, bring that in and bring it into your risk program. Uh, and maybe there's some on-site specific things. You never know if, you know, if you're going to, for example, a nursing home that's part of a hospital chain, if they have some specific health regulations you need to follow about, you know, trying to keep readmission rates down, for example. Uh, you know, and some, some actual procedures you have to do that only you have to do at that specific site. So you've got all of these things. It's not sort of black and white. Another way to think of this, the banking laws change very, very rarely. Health laws change, I swear, as fast as you can blink your eyes, there's a new one out, or a new state attorney general has this or that. Uh, so the health issues um, are specific. The big one here is HIPAA. None of those frameworks understand HIPAA. So for example, they typically don't have strict set rules for notifications in case of data breaches. HIPAA, you got 60 days to let CMS know, and oh, by the way, under your regulatory, you may have a state where you got 15 days to let a patient know that their data has been exposed. Okay, so you've got all these competing things that typically, you know, banks are pretty set in stone in how they do things. So we need a risk framework that you pick that if you want to modify, will be able to handle these things. You may have to create them on your own, all right? But you need to make sure you can cover at least these specific issues that you know that, you, that guide what you do as an organization. Okay. So there is one healthcare specific group and entity and a framework that we can use uh, if we so choose. So a group called the High Trust Alliance, they actually formed in 2007. So these were some major healthcare plans and some major healthcare providers, think large hospital chains, that were upset that there was nothing specific to healthcare, especially in terms of cybersecurity. Okay, so High Trust decided they would take the best things out of all of those different groups, those other frameworks and models that we talked about, the methodologies we talked about, the COBIT-5, the ISO 27005, all of those and they would take the best parts out of them and then create things that were really around healthcare. Things like that breach notification I discussed earlier, that piece is in high trust, but it's not in others. Again, come from healthcare, design for healthcare. It is a risk-based cyber security framework. So if you think, oh, this is the answer to my prayers, well, just use theirs. First off, it's free, you can download them. That cybersecurity framework is 688 pages long. It, it is extremely long, has all different kinds of things. Uh, it's very complex. You'll probably need assistance in getting this done and implemented. But it doesn't cover all your risks. It's only based around cybersecurity risks. It's not based around organizational risks. Like, what about your contractual agreement with it, where you're a medical director for a facility. Are you meeting your contractual obligations there? Uh, you know, what about readmission rates? Is that part of it? So you're still going to have to add things that are healthcare specific to you outside of the CSF. What they've done is basically covered all of the computer geek stuff, the cybersecurity, 
uh, the process, policies, procedures, guidelines, baselines, and everything around cybersecurity for you to implement. So there, for example, that's going to say you need to be doing backups. Okay, so we need to be doing backups. But it's not going to tell you you need to manage your reinfection rates at a particular facility to a particular number because that's part of your contract. That's something you'll have to add. So it's great uh, for very technical organizations. Um, you can put this in place. For small organizations, this is probably overkill for you. Uh, you may need to create something on your own or pick one that you like and take the best parts of that and create it for yourself. But if you need to find something and start from something that's healthcare specific, the High Trust My CSF, um, the, that is actually the best tool to start from. Okay, so we've kind of talked today about some of these, you know, the difference between a methodology and a framework. So you understand them if you're picking one to use. Uh, you know, why is healthcare different? Uh, and the fact that most of those came from a banking environment and they don't have the healthcare specific center. And then we talked a little bit about the high trust my CSF, which is a great place to start, but it is quite complex. And again, if it is so complex, you need some specific knowledge and have some people with some skill sets to be able to, to take that and pull out of it what you need and put in place. You may need a consultant to help you, for example. But none of them is a take it out of the box, put it in place, and it'll automatically work for your organization. You need to take the best of all of those, put them together, ident identify the places where you don't have things, and basically write them yourself. Every organization is different. That's one of the things you have to do is adapt it to your organization. Once you have that method, you know, a framework or methodology picked and then you modify it, you magically now have a process to follow. And that's most importantly that you do your process and as I say, even though I don't have hair, you rinse and repeat. You must constantly be on vigilantly following your process all the time. I de identify my assets. Can I figure out what's wrong with them? Assess them. Get me a risk level. Figure out do I need a treatment plan? Do it get residual risk and come back around. All right, folks. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.